Hello everybody, it's Austin Holloman and today I want to do another update video on why I'm in Nairobi, Kenya for my second time this year and I'm here for at least a month this time. It's, I'm going on my fourth week. I think next week is my fourth week here so I've been here three weeks and I wanted to give you guys an update after 30 days in total of being in Nairobi of this year why I'm moving to Nairobi to stay for I don't know permanently but I'll be here for a while for sure. Number one and this is just an update video, so you may have heard some, heard some of the same talking points in my older video, but I'm just updating. I'm going to keep updating every so often so you guys can get my real-time experience on how I feel. But I feel like I fit right in in this country, in this city, and it's better to be around my own kind. What do I mean by my own kind? I mean black people. Of course, most in normal situations, normal circumstances, a race of person is going to be feel is going to feel more comfortable around his race. You're going to feel more comfortable if you're white around other white people or black if you're around other black people. Um, in the United States, it's probably not a thing because they kind of teach us that we're dangerous for each other. So a lot of black people in the states might feel more comfortable in a diverse high school or a diverse college versus the HBCU because when we hear all black colleges, we think, oh shit, they're going to be fighting and. It's gonna be, they're going to be using drugs and all this kind of stuff, which a, a lot of times, not saying at HBCU, but in like black high schools in the United States, that's true. But coming to Africa has been a life-changing experience because I've been able to adjust to being around black people without them fitting those negative stereotypes. So out of all the four countries I've been to so far, Kenya is the one where I feel like I fit the best in around these people. And yeah, I really love the people here. I love the people in Kenya. So that's that's what matters the most when you move to a country. You they can have the best internet, the best food, the best weather, but if the people that you interact with on a daily basis aren't for you, you're not gonna like it at all. But that's not the case. I love Kenyans people. Kenyans, let me say that. Uh, and to elaborate on that, the Kenyan people are extremely welcoming, loving, and they validate the fact that. If I ever wonder, like, do they want me in their country? They validate that every day. The way how they speak to you and how polite they are. That's why they say they have the best customer service in Africa. Or at least East Africa. I've heard that Kings have the best customer service in Africa. But I can see that. Why? Because of how they communicate. They're, they're very... The words that they pick to use are just very... They make you feel very comfortable around them. And they smile... And they're just very genuine people from what I can see as far as being here for a month. Now, also, besides the people, it's a cheap cost of living here. Now, Nairobi is not cheap uh, when it comes to your house. Maybe the food is okay, but coming from the United States, it is cheap. But some places here, like in Westlands, where it's pretty much the heart of everything from my understanding from me being here, uh, you're gonna be damn near paying US prices like my apartment in Dallas was eleven hundred dollars This one bedroom apartment. I'm in right now is literally One thousand three hundred and fifty dollars more than what I was paying in Dallas That's for Airbnb. I'm pretty sure if I was able to rent it It might be around nine hundred eight hundred bucks But being outside the United States in a developing country as you may call it Don't get offended by me saying that because I know some of y'all sensitive but a developing country uh Nine hundred dollars for a one bedroom is expensive because when I was in Brazil, I had uh, one bedroom where I could see, smell, and hear the beach literally, and it was only five hundred sixty dollars a month, and I had a maid every day. But you can't have everything. But there's still a, a relatively cheap cost of living that will keep me here, and that makes it easier for me to live here than, let's say, maybe somewhere like Switzerland. Also. For it to be an African country, the modernization is keeping the people up to date. Meaning that they know what's going on around the world. They're hip to social media. Sometimes when you hear the Kenyan people talk, if you were to close your eyes, they sound like black Americans sometimes because they literally say the exact same stuff we say. Even some of the negative things too, but I don't think they really understand understand the the negatives i think that's just something that they may just be repeating but where i'm from some things i hear them say i have to tell them i don't know if you really mean that or if you, you know some but they're up to date let's say that they're very hip to the movies the tv shows the instagram models and the celebrities and the music that we have in the state so that makes it a lot more easier to relate to the people because 
you you have things in common that you already know. Everything's not brand new to them. Like when I was in Brazil, stuff that I would tell people, either they were completely ignorant to it and they thought something wrong or they were just brand new to what I was telling them. So Kenyans are pretty much modernized and they know what's going on throughout the world. This country also has the best internet out of the four African countries I've been to. I've only been to four African countries. But so far, this is the most reliable, fastest, and the calls don't drop repeatedly like two out of the other three, two out of the other four countries that I went to in Africa. So I work online, YouTube is my job, and the internet is very important to me. So that's another reason why I would want to stay here. Also, the food is healthy. It's Tanzania had the healthiest food I've ever had, but Kenya is not too far off. And I've only been in Nairobi. I heard it gets better in Mombasa, so I'll do another update video when I get there. And I stay there for a while. But the food is healthier than, than what it is in the States. You know, there's no food here that I eat that makes me hungry or it makes me feel all groggy. And unless if it's something like an American company that's out here, I don't eat American food like that. I don't really eat because I know how the food is processed and for the most part it's not that good for you but the Kenyan food is healthy for me and it's making my skin glow and it's, make, it's keeping my energy levels up and everything is just getting better health wise for me based off the food I've been eating here in Kenya now the transportation is very convenient the Ubers uh, if you need a delivery service all that stuff is literally at your fingertips and the Ubers you call an Uber and they're outside in literally on average 30 seconds to two or three minutes I've been to other African countries where I've waited an hour for an uber it was too far for me to walk you know and I just had to keep call I spent an hour on uber and then you got to tell the uber drivers how to how you got to tell them where to go in their own country and you're a foreigner but here in Kenya I've not ran into that issue like it's, it's not an issue now and I haven't tried a, what is it, a Matutu, a Matatu, whatever the little bus is with the subwoofers. I haven't tried that yet, but I'll get that on a short video uh, probably sometime this week. Now, the accessibility to electronics, cigars, good nightlife, and there's not much that I can't find. Now, what am I saying? Why did I include cigars in that? Because I've been to other countries. I've been to one country where they seem to be just about banned. I went to another one where they had them, and I went to another one where there was one place in the entire city of 9 million people that sold cigars. So here in Kenya, there's multiple options if I wanted to buy something like that. Just little small things that you really wouldn't think of until you need them. Uh, Kenya has accessibility to them. Electronics, you can buy a PlayStation here if you want to. I don't know how much they cost, but I've seen them when I walk past the stores. I've been to other African countries and it, it, it looks like sometimes when you walk past there like they're like you might as well be at 1950 based off the selection of electronics you get. Uh, now there is a good nightlife here in Nairobi. You, there's always something to do seven days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There is something going on and there's some place where it's going to be packed for me to go there and hang out. So that I'm 24. So. I have to moderate my uh, nightlife activity, but it is good to know that, like some of the other African countries I went to, if I want to get out, I can get out and I can have a good time versus those other places. Some of them, not all of them, but some of the, yeah, let's say all of them. All the other places, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Some of them, I would want to get out and there would be seven people when I go hang out, so I can't have that good of a time in some of those places. But Nairobi, Kenya, I can't say that about that at all. And if I want to buy shoes, it's not like I've been to some African countries where if you want to buy a pair of shoes, you might as well go try to find an Easter egg. You know, it's it's not that easy to find shoes in this one country I went to. But here, they have literally, I am i can't stress enough how much of an accessibility there is to things to just about everything you need. You can find everything you need in this city, in Nairobi, Kenya. Now, also, I do travel a lot if you've watched my channel I'm going all over the world right now. I just been stuck in Kenya because I love it. And I can't be lying about it because I'm here. I'm y'all not only stay in countries ten days at a time, but I've been here for about four times that amount almost. Three times, four times, whatever it is. But if I wanted to leave, they have one of the best airlines in Africa, from my understanding. So why do I say that? If I want to go from Kenya to Madagascar, their airline flies directly there. If I want to go to Joburg from here, their airline flies directly there. Most of the African countries, 
from Kenya, you can fly directly to most of them, from what I've seen. Uh, for example, uh, Tanzania's airways. I wanted to go to the country Mozambique, which is right next to Tanzania. And in order for me to get there, I was going to have to fly to Kenya or to uh, South Africa. Or I was going to have to fly to Ethiopia, have a layover there, and then fly to Mozambique. When the countries are so close together, I could probably walk to Mozambique if I wanted to. But with Kenya, I can fly directly there from my understanding. But you guys get the point when I say that. So that's very important for me because if I want to have this as a home base, which I will. I'm looking for my apartments right now. If I want to have this as a home base, I need somewhere that I can convene. Just like the United States, you can fly to any country just about from the United States. So that's a convenient country to fly out of. So that that's why I called Kenya the United States of Africa. And I also say that because Kenya is very diverse. There's all all nationalities of Africans, almost, I've seen here. And other places like India and China, but I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about Africans right now. So, another thing is, the standards of living are very modern. So if you guys seen the condo tour I did with Troy, his place is very 2023. Like, it's up to date. There's a lot of places here, a lot of restaurants where everything, pretty much everywhere, even looking at the skyline here in Nairobi, everything is up to date. I was in other African countries. If I seen a restaurant that looked like it was built in 2020, it looked like I was in Star Trek and then the rest of the country was a dinosaur age. So everything, there's a modern standard of living. Everything here is very similar to what you would have in the United States when it comes to standards of living, I would say. Now... Another thing is the women want me here too because you can have all the rest of this other stuff, but if your dating life sucks, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna like the country. You know, humans are supposed to reproduce. If nobody wants you in your area, I don't give a damn what you say. You're not gonna like that country, so don't even leave them comments talking about they don't matter because they do matter. But long story short, they love me and I love them too, and they're beautiful. And they don't need to go to the gym to be in shape. I mean, I'm not saying they shouldn't go to the gym, but they damn sure don't need to. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. I'll see y'all in the next video and be, be on the lookout for another update on my experience living here in Kenya next.